So today, Cubs went full sell mode. Baez, Rizzo, Bryant, Jake Marisnik, Trevor Williams, like they're gone, right? Like they, they cleared house. I wanted to make sure I'm not forgetting anybody's name. But so yeah, Cubs, Cubs cleared house. They went full sell mode and props to the office, the front office to fully commit to that, right? They didn't just pick Rizzo or they didn't just pick Baez or they didn't just pick Bryant and sell one of them or trade one of them or just get, or two of them, right? And keep one, right? They fully committed to it. So props to them to fully committing to selling. Where the issue is, is that this shouldn't have happened, right? Extensions probably should have been figured out beforehand. This We shouldn't have been to a point where we're letting Bryant, Baez, Rizzo all leave. And now we're hoping that the, the prospects that we got in return pan out, right? Because now we could have just completely threw away something that we had. We had a dynasty in place and we kind of just sat back and coasted after that World Series. And I'm kind of disappointed in the way the Cubs handled that, but that's not what we're here. We're here to talk about the Cubs trades and get my opinion on them. Because one side, I'm pretty upset that those guys are gone, but I got to think of it as more of the future, right? The Cubs are planning for the future now. Is it good for us? Did we get enough in return for those guys that we traded away? Let's talk about it. So of course, if you enjoyed it, thumbs up down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and enjoyed the content. And of course, in the comment section, I wanna hear your opinions. What did you think? Did the Cubs do well? Did the Cubs do poorly? I know a lot of you guys are gonna be upset that those guys are gone, but let's talk about this future. Let's see how the Cubs are gonna be looking in the next couple of years. So let's start with the first trade, Anthony Rizzo to the Yankees, which of course, you know, it kind of fits what they needed. A lefty power bat, a lefty bat, a guy who can play first base over Luke Voigt. And to be honest, I'm actually pretty happy with what the Cubs got in return. Alexander Vizcaino, right-hander, 24 years old, only an A ball right now. So, you know, I would say a little bit behind the curve on terms of development. You know, 24, I would kind of hope you'd be double A, maybe pushing triple A. But again, you know, there's there's definitely some upside to this. You know, changeup is a, supposedly his best pitch, right? 65 on the grade scale, love to see that. Apparently Cubs, Cubs system just loves the changeup. And apparently this guy has just a nasty, nasty changeup. And when you look at his stats, he he's, he's definitely struggled. You know, the ERA is definitely high and he's only pitched six innings this this year which is interesting right that is he more of a reliever is he going to be a starter where where are we picturing this guy fitting into the organization right whip is an extremely high but again only six innings so it's a really small sample size you look at 115 innings a year uh, in 2019 they did lose 2020 so a one three whip you know a 438 era it looks like the whip and the era are always going to be high is this guy a starter I guess it looks like it. I guess it looks like it. So it, it seems like this guy definitely has some work to do to kind of polish off whatever issues it is. It looks like hits are definitely an issue. It looks like walks can definitely be an issue as well, but it definitely looks like hits are the big issue here. So if he can figure out the changeup, keep that as his main pitch, you know, he's got that fastball which was, again, a 65 rating is very, very good. It looks like he needs that third pitch to really develop and turn into a complete pitcher. If he can't develop that, then he's looking like more of a reliever. And again, like we're, we're getting a guy who clearly has the skills, clearly has good potential. So am I happy for it? Of course, but there's clearly something missing with this guy. And I feel like if we're looking at it it's looking like he's gonna be more of a reliever so we may have a nasty reliever on our hands we'll have to wait and see alcantara super young 19 years old right so 2019 you know 41 games again pretty small sample size to judge off of same thing with this year but when you look at his his grades 60 run which is which is good fielding above average arm above average power above average i mean all of his all of his grades are above average a lot of people really like this pickup People were saying this was kind of like the one that we should be really, really excited for. And to be honest, to get Rizzo, to get these two players from Rizzo, who becomes a free agent at the end of the year, to get two players who already jump into our top 10 in our farm system, it's a it's a good pickup. Do I hate to see the captain go? Like the, the guy that was a staple for our infield for every single season for what seems like forever. Yeah, it sucks to see him leave. 
But to get these two guys, I'm happy for it. Because you got to think, the three main guys that we traded away are all free agents at the end of the year. So if we let them walk and didn't get anything in return, it, it would have been even worse. So we already got two top 10 guys in our system. I'm okay with that. Next up for Javi Baez and Trevor Williams, we got a top 10 in the Mets system, Pete Crow Armstrong, PCA. I like this pickup. This was probably one of my favorite pickups of all the moves that we did. This is this is huge. Still really young, 19, 20 years old. You know, his season was, you know, 2021. It was cut short this year. He's a recent draft pick. He was drafted last year, but season's cut short. He's out for the year with an injury. But you can see, even in the small sample size, he's done really well. He's got really good grades. His runs is 60, fields is 65. That is huge. Hit 55. The power is not there yet, but I mean, you read it, everything is good about this guy. Obviously, losing him for the season because of injury really sucks, but you know what? I'm, I, I, I think this is one of my favorite pickups of the whole trade deadline. PCA has such high upside. He's still really, really young at 19. ETA is 2023. 20, I think even at 2024, we're really good. I, I think with the Cubs right now, we got to look at it that we're not going to be competing for the next couple of years. We're in a retool. We're waiting on these young guys to really develop. So I expect us to be a team that maybe Kyle Hendricks gets moved next season or in the off season. Wilson Contreras potentially could get moved as well. You know, we're looking at Ian Happ, other guys that have been on the squad, they could get moved. So I think this is a team that I think we're two, three, four years away from being back in the postseason. But once all those youngsters, Horner, uh, Madrigal, who we just got traded, we have PCA, we have Brandon Davis, and all these pieces that we have, once they start getting that MLB time, once things start to come together, we'll be back and we'll have our new core. Who is it going to be? It's it's in the farm system. We just got to wait and see who it's going to be. So PCA, I think, fits that, that timeline that we have now. And I really like this pickup. This guy's got grades that are really good. Uh, the potential's there, the, the tools are there. I really like this move. So another guy who's been injured this entire, or not this entire season, because you can see he played 54 games this year, but he's out for the rest of the year. Nick Madrigal, who's come in from the Craig Kimbrell trade. This was another one that I think we did really well in. Cody Hoyer struggles with command, but has great velocity. I think he can be a great piece for our bullpen going forward. He's only 25 years old. Like he's still got plenty of time. Let me pull him up because I, I, I think this was a, a really good pickup for us. So he's only been in the bigs for like two seasons. And even then he's only pitched 62 innings in his career. Like that's not a lot, right? We still have got plenty of time to develop things. Last year he was, he was lights out. Obviously this year hits are a big issue, really big issue. Obviously runs are as well, but he strikes out a good amount of people. He's got velocity. I know that about him. It's just clearly, you know, command and allowing hits are a bit of a problem, a bit of a problem. So I definitely think if we can fine tune everything, him being only 25 years old, I think this is a really good piece for us. Again, he's, he's still young. He's going to have team control, fits the bullpen perfectly. The other one here, Nick Madrigal. We've been missing that contact guy who can be at the top of the lineup, can be at the bottom of the lineup, just gets on base. Nick Madrigal is that guy. This kind of means that Nico Horner most likely moves to shortstop, but now we've got Horner and Madrigal, the middle infield is set for the future. We've also got crazy infield depth where Horner could potentially move to the outfield if we need him to. He's a really versatile piece. Picking up Nick Madrigal, I think is a good thing. I mean, look at his numbers. He gets on base. On base percentage is high. He's a contact guy, decent in the field. Uh, these are last year's grade, but 70 hit, 60 run, 60 field. This is what we needed. And this is what we got to get a good bullpen piece for the future. And also Nick Madrigal, who's only 24, 25. No brainer, no brainer. So good. I like this trade. I think this Kimbrel trade was probably number two for me right behind the PCA pickup. All right, two more. We got the big one, Bryant, and then we got Jake Marisnik. Jake Marisnik got sent to the Padres, which the fact that we got a number nine in the Padres farm system for Jake Marisnik is pretty good. The thing with Anderson Espinosa, he's got a good fastball. His changeup's okay. Overall, you know, 45. Curveball's okay. Control's okay. The thing with him was Tommy John, right? And then Tommy John tommy john again that is the big issue with him still really young right 
Um, this season, he is struggling a little bit. You know, last season struggled a little bit as well. Um, and, oh, actually 2016. So Tommy John back-to-back -back years. That's kind of the question. Is he going to return to that form of when what he had before Tommy John? Or is it more of like, okay, he's a completely different pitcher. We're going to have to work around those, those arm injuries and kind of refine what he still has. So do I think this one is kind of a boom or bust pickup? Definitely. But Jake Marismic was a one-year guy. Maybe comes back, most likely doesn't. So to get someone that is in a stacked farm system like the Padres, that's considered a number nine, even if he, these are like the preseason rankings, even if he fell down to somewhere within 15 or 20, the Padres farm system is stacked. So to be able to get someone like that, who still has good potential, is still young, if we can fine tune those things that he has going on with the control issues and everything, I think we've got a really good pitcher. I've been, I, I've known about Anderson Espinosa for a few years. I still think he's got some stuff. I still think he's going to be a good pitcher. So I really i am trying to stay positive and happy about the pickups that we had because I'm trying to think it, think of it for the future. Could these players be busts? Of course, anything can happen with prospects, but the potential that we're getting for these trades and the value that we got for most of these, these moves, I'm really happy with. So this was a trade I felt like we could have done better with this. And this is why I left it for last. Also, because this one came down to the deadline. Um, Chris Bryant to the Giants. This one, I felt like we could have done a little bit better. I felt like we could have gotten top five for Chris Bryant alone. I felt like because of Baez's high strikeout rate, yes, he's got a good glove. Yes, he's got a, like a power bat, but we had to package Trevor Williams to get that, that fifth overall spot in the organization for the Mets. I honestly thought Chris Bryant could have easily gotten you know, a top five in the Giants organization. The Giants organization is really stacked. Like these three right here, I, I felt like these three were off limits, but you know, maybe Bishop or Corey, maybe even Patrick Bailey or Luis Matos. I felt like something like that could have been in play. I also thought maybe we would have packaged Bryant with a pitcher, maybe a Zach Davies. Giants could use some help with pitching. So I could have thought maybe a Bryant and a Davies that potentially could have got us into the top three. To get number nine, Alexander Canario, who, again, 21 years old, you know, I think I think his grades right here, 50 run, 50 field, 55 power. So he's definitely got the, the pop in the bat. We got to work on the contact a little bit. You can see he is struggling a little bit on base percentage wise and average, having a little bit of a down year. But I know a lot of people are super high on him. This was a guy that I've heard the name. I know the potential's there, and a lot of people actually think this is a good pickup for us. I know a lot of people are unhappy that we and felt like we could have gotten more. I'm in the same boat. I definitely thought we could have got more for Chris Bryant, but as I hit myself in the face with my, my sh <laughs> shoestring here, but or my hoodie string, I definitely thought we could have done better. And Canario is still a very good pickup in a very stacked organization. Number nine is good. We also did get Caleb Killian, who is 24. He is sitting in double A this season and in 15 games, he's killing it. So I didn't know much about him. He's, he's slightly above average on everything here, but looking at his numbers looks decent. Um, so curveball, change up, cutter, fastball. So it looks like he's got four pitches. So games started, he's got 15. So he's, he's, pro he's profiling as a starter. Does he end up a starter? Who knows? But to pick up someone, you know, as a as a pitcher here, definitely always good to have pitchers in your system. And Canario being the main piece, again, I definitely think we could have done better. But I'm not super disappointed in the in the pickups, right? I know there were rumors that we we had Joey Bart as part of the trade. That wasn't true. We got Canario instead. But overall, I'm looking at these trades and I'm going, okay, Poyer and Madrigal. Madrigal fits into our team immediately next year, right? He's an MLB ready player. What does that mean for Horner? Does he move to the outfield? Is Brennan Davis ready? When we look at the Cubs organization, you know, there, there are some question marks. There are some question marks. And I felt like we really needed to stack it. Braylon Marquez hasn't pitched at all this year. He's battled a shoulder injury. Is Brennan Davis ready? Miguel Amaya, is he ready? Ed Howard and Christian Hernandez, both kind of struggling in the minors right now. Uh, we just got Vizcaino. Cole Franklin, is he going to be ready anytime soon? Morel. I just feel like when you look at what we have, I feel like we're still two, three, four years away from allowing these players to be MLB ready. So that's why I'm okay with the picks that we got. B 
because it's a new era. It's a it's it's a new it's a new chapter for these Cubs, right? What what are we gonna do with Hap? Is Wilson gonna stay on the team? I know we have you know kind of a question mark at first base. Is Patrick Wisdom a piece that we're gonna keep? What's happening with David Bodie? Is Horner gonna move to the outfield to the infield? There's a lot of question marks. Pitching is a little bit of a question mark too. What's gonna happen with Kyle Hendricks? So I think with this team, we have these prospects. We have some pieces to build with for the future. And also now, since we haven't extended Baez, Rizzo, or Bryant, we have some money to work with for the offseason. So we could go out and pick up some pieces to still kind of facilitate this retool that we're doing. So do I hate the moves? No. Do I think we could have done better? Yes. Do I wish we would have kept those core pieces? Of course. But it's a new era. We got to do something. And I felt like we full sent it. We sold. And that's what we did. So it's a longer video than I anticipated. But that kind of breaks down everything. I feel like we did really well on these trades. I feel like we did fantastic. I feel like it, it really signals this is a new chapter of the Cubs. So we just got to see what happens, especially with this offseason. I think this is going to be a big indicator of what's going to happen between this year and next year. So let's see what happens. I hope you enjoyed the video. Of course, if you did, thumbs up down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and enjoy the content. And of course, in the comment section, I want to hear your opinion on the Cubs deadline, other teams deadline. Let me know down below. Catch you in the next one. Peace.